Aloha, everybody. Welcome back. Today, I want to talk about developing relationships with your plants. Yes, that's it. Bill and the blueberry. Uh, guys, it sounds kind of, you know, new agey. <laughs> Let's talk to our plants, but no, that's not really uh, where I'm going. Uh, I, I find that when I get working with a particular plant, whether it be an apple tree, for instance, or a mac nut tree, or papayas, pineapples, whatever it is, it's actually for me almost kind of like uh, going on a first date. <laughs> Okay, yeah, because I, I have relationships with the plants I work with. Uh, plants predated uh, humans' arrival on this planet by so long. I mean, really, you know, if you look at you know, uh, Botany of Desire, there's a PBS and a, uh, uh, a book, Michael Pollan. You know, you know, Poland's attitude about all this, his whole idea on, on horticulture and botany is that plants control us. They get us to plant their seeds. They get us to harvest their fruits and so on. You know, that their numbers become greater and they spread much better when they uh, attach themselves to human beings. You know, people are always thinking, oh yeah, we're, we're farmers, and this is a corn seed, and dumb old corn, put that thing in the ground, it don't know nothing. You know, grow it up, feed it to the cows, but we could be doing the plant spitting. After all, they have been here a lot longer than we have figuring out things. Uh, we only got here, really, because of plants, if it hadn't been for... Uh, the chloroplasts and green plants, the production of oxygen, we wouldn't even have an atmosphere to breathe here, so plants kind of set the stage for us to even exist. And so, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit humbled to my carrots. <laughs> Truly, I owe them so much. Um, and again, when I take a plant and I bring it into my garden and I start to work with it, it's like a lot like a first date, you know. I'm going, oh, you know, I'm on my best behavior as a gardener. I do all my stuff right, make sure that I'm going to put that plant in the ground right, you know, so, so it's going to like me, you know, and so on and so forth. And I can get going with a plant sometimes and decide, uh -uh, this ain't the one, I'm out of here, you know. Uh, don't call me, I'll call you, bye. Uh, that happens. But most of the time, I, by the time I've gotten to work with a plant, I, I've usually developed already some kind of a desire to be with this plant, you know. I have some sort of a need that I think needs to be fulfilled. Um, and so I really do develop relationships with my plants. And in some cases, like in the case of apple trees, or particularly pawpaw trees are a great example. These are old friends of mine. Yeah. You know, call it what you want, but, you know, when I when I go up to uh, an apple tree, for instance, and I look at the tree, at this point, I know that tree so well. I know the tree pretty much like w uh, the same way I know a life partner, you know, that Ellen, for instance. I know quite a bit about her uh, by now. <laughs> Maybe more than I want to know, but, you know, and, and so there's certain ways that I'm going to interact with her because I know her. Uh, I remember one time um, when I had a, uh, a bad motorcycle accident. Yeah, it was, it was, it was bad. <laughs> it came close. Uh, it was pretty close. Uh, that I, I almost extinguished myself. But anyway, I was under for hours the surgery took forever to put me back together and I, I don't remember any more how long I was under but I was under longer than most people ever knocked out with anesthetic to get this work done and after I came around later on I had amnesia it was probably from the anesthesia but I experienced amnesia I, I remembered everything yeah I didn't you know the whole life story was all there. I recognized everybody and so on. But I couldn't remember why. Yeah. I couldn't remember why. 
uh, you know, why did I remember this? You know, why do I smile when I say that to my brother? You know, why do I feel this way about my my wife? You know, and so on. Uh, I actually, because I didn't want to panic the people around me. They, they were already panicked enough. Bill was busted bad. I didn't want to let him know that I couldn't remember why. And so... I played this game that I would ask my brother a question and he would respond back to me in a certain way. And I said, okay, this is the way the two of us relate. Okay, we have this. Okay. And, and so, and I went about like that and I, and I basically put my personality back together again by bringing it back from other people around me that said, oh, this is the way we act with Bill, you know, because Bill believes this or that or whatever, you know. But I, and so definitely... Uh, I change my state of being to some extent. I create a interlocking persona with the people that I hang with. I do the same thing with my trees and my vegetables and so on. Um, you know, the first time I ever planted an apple tree, I was nervous. You know, it was, it was like a first date, man, you know. I, I really didn't know what I was doing. I was afraid I was going to screw up, you know, and, and so on. Well, and I had to go out and ask other people, you know, I spent a lot of time asking the old gardeners about how do you prune this thing and so on and so forth. Yeah, and, uh, well, I don't feel that way at all anymore. Today I walk up to my apple trees and I go, hey there, old friend, how you doing? Oh yeah, your fruit and spurs look good, you know, oh my goodness, I got a feeling somebody's chewing on your leaves, I'm going to do something about this. I'm familiar I'm familiar and I have a relationship not only with uh, the specific tree, but with, say, all apple trees or all pawpaw trees. I can come up to your pawpaw tree. And I even think the pawpaw recognizes me. <laughs> it's true. I, plants are conscious somehow or another. And not, not in the way we are. And so it's kind of hard for us to understand this. Uh, difficult for me, you know. I'm a human. What do I know? <laughs> but yeah, they are conscious somehow. I have seen plants respond to human will too many times in my life. Not to believe that the plants somehow are aware of us, and somehow they're aware of what it is we're looking for because. You know, I, I may need a certain type of chili to ripen within a certain period of time in a certain growing season. And it might be slightly improbable because the chili I'm working with takes 20 days more than I actually have between frost-free dates to perform properly. But almost always, I keep planting and eventually I'll walk down the row and there'll be one individual that will suddenly start ripening 20 days ahead of the others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've seen it over and over. That what it is that I think I'm seeking in plants almost always shows up. If it's possible, it happens. Um, you know, so it's one of the reasons, for instance, that I'm not... Um, well, I, I like named cultivars and when other people have done work and found a certain fruit you know or something or a variety that we know is good generally accepted as being you know excellent quality you know i like to have these things in you know in my collections of fruit but uh, or with my vegetables but i also do an awful lot of growing from seed in a random way seeking things I'm looking for something when I do that. I'm hoping that it might show up. And as I've said, it almost always shows up. Um, and so I don't tend to push on plants very much. I'm not really aggressive with any of this. I'm just a whole lot more observant. Um, I haven't got a whole lot of preconceived notions about things. I, you know, people will say, oh, well, this thing takes forever to bear, you know, or um, whatever. There's a lot of things people have to say out there. You know, I, well, I hear it. I acknowledge it. Uh, you know, if it's, if 12 different people say the same thing, you know, it's probably true. Uh, you know, and so uh, I'll put that in the back of my mind. 
But I don't usually use it as a guide. Uh, you know, time and speed of plants is definitely one place where I believe I kind of depart from the average grower in that I could care less how long it takes something. What I know is that you never get what you don't plant. <laughs> That's my rules. If you come up with any old reason why, oh, I can't do that, you know, and we, we do that a lot as people. Yeah, we, we're, we break our own pencils all the time uh, because we get these ideas. We have beliefs in our heads. You know, that may, I've always wondered when I tell somebody, well, it's going to take probably about six years to get persimmons on that tree. And they're going, oh, my goodness, ah, I can't wait that long. You know, uh, it's as if... It's if everybody knows when they're going to die, you know? It's like, how do you know how much time you've got on Earth? You'll never have what you don't plant. Um, um, there's certainly no pain in planting something that you never picked before you expired because the dead don't eat. <laughs> you know, so... <clears throat> So there's that relationship factor, too, that you develop with plants that acknowledges their speed and their timing. See, this is, this is one of the things where I tend to, um, um, I honor my plants at the rate that, that, they, that they develop and that, that their nature, it's their personalities. You know, a Satsuma Mandarin has one personality, and sometimes I don't know what that personality is because it seems to like change all the time with that tree. But, you know, a pawpaw has got a certain personality. Um, for me, it's really a special one, actually, because um, I was reading Yule Gibbons, Stalking the Wild Asparagus, back in, oh, probably 1969 or 70. Uh, the book was on the bestseller list at the time. <clears throat> and uh, I read the book. I was inspired to, to go out and hunt down wild foods. I'd already been picking wild asparagus and blackberries, you know, by that time, but, you know, Yule, he had a whole bunch of stuff, and then there was the pawpaw, and he just kept going on, expounding upon the virtues of the pawpaw, what a marvelous thing it is, you know, and I was hooked. I had to do pawpaw. I couldn't find him. And, you know, I was good at trotting the woods, too. Where I lived in northern Illinois, I was always out in the forest, in the fields, and the prairies, you know. I loved it. But couldn't find any pawpaws. So pretty much, I believe what had happened, in Illinois at least, is that the soil in Illinois is incredibly fertile in general. The soils in the Midwest were exceptional, like the woods in Ukraine. And... Uh, just about every inch of land that pawpaws might have grown on in Illinois was pretty much put down to the plow and with soybeans or corn. Uh, they loved alluvial bottomlands along rivers. So does corn. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, there weren't many left. They, as I say, I was about 18 uh, when I really first got interested in this fruit and I was 51 before I picked the first one. I just kept planting and moving, planting, moving, planting, moving, and so on. Finally, I stayed around long enough in California that I was able to start to harvest the, the fruits from my pawpaw trees. And, uh, you know, the seed, I had grown them well, not from grafted cultivars, but from collected seed uh, that had come from two very notable sources. Uh, uh, Ray Jones, who was a Bay Area pawpaw expert with the California River Fruit Growers, got seed from Ray, and uh, I also got seed from Corwin Davis in Michigan, the guy who bred the Davis pawpaw, you know, so he was famous for pawpaws. The <clears throat> collection of genetic material he had was exceptional, and I planted out the stuff I got from them, and uh, it was uh, uh, Corwin's seed that was the, the one that came on to yield first. And here we are, you know, it's my first date here, right? You know, this might be the first time, finally, that I was going to be able to start to pick pawpaws from all of that work, you know. Um, and, uh, well, it turned out that the tree was not only self-fertile because it, it made fruit three years ahead of all the other trees I had, and it did fine on its own pollinating. Uh, so it was obviously a self-fertile tree, very low in tannin, um, and so it was an exceptionally delicious pawpaw. Um, and as I said, 
I'm, when I'm looking for something, it almost always seems to show up. And I try to have no preconceived opinions about things, really. Just kind of a list of parameters, you know, of what it is that I, I need from that plant. <clears throat> and, well, if I, if I keep planting and I wait long enough, sooner or later, I see it. And so I, I'm not a big one on pushing on plants very much. You know, I do some grafting as needed to per perpetuate desirable cultivars. Uh, I do cross-pollinization of plants to try to create new hybrids, you know. Um, that's about it. You know, I fertilize, try to make sure the culture is good, but long ago I realized that, you know, you've got under-fertilized plants and you've got over-fertilized plants. Somewhere in the middle is a perfectly happy plant that has just what it needs to grow. Uh, because once you start pushing on them, trying to make them do things that they ordinarily wouldn't do in that time frame or at that rate of speed, uh, you usually end up with undesirable things happening. The stretched vegetation becomes weak, uh, insects are attracted to it, diseases are more prevalent on things that you're trying to ram them to the finish and so on. And usually the quality of the produce isn't as good. It's just not as good. It might be big, you know, there it is, but uh, usually one grown under more natural type conditions uh, where the trees are really operating at their own pace, where the vegetables are developing at their natural rate of speed. Not too fast, not too slow. That's usually where the highest quality is at. <laughs> and, uh, well, after a while I become familiar with some of the plants that I had first dates with, you know. And after I've planted them maybe 50 years or so, uh, they're old friends. Yeah. They've been around my life for so long. They have given me so much. They have made friends for me. I mean, the pawpaw tree, for instance, uh, with the rare fruit growers in California. Man, I met so many people when they found out I had a pawpaw tree that fruited. Oh, man. Yeah, it was a social greeting card, you know. Um, and so I always called the kumquat, uh, you know, a conversation tree because we, I didn't do much with them. Otherwise, I didn't cook kumquats or, but people would come visit the garden. They'd ask about the kumquat tree. We'd stand around the tree and we'd eat kumquats and talk. <laughs> yeah, and that was the way the tree was. So it was part of a relationship then, not only just with me, but with the other people around me too. You know, pawpaws were that way. I had so many friends because of pawpaws. Kumquats, same way. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. The relationships that develop around plants. And so, you know, you, well, when I see people that... It's clear that they don't have these sorts of personal attachments with their plants where they could call something an old friend, you know, kind of like that, and have that sort of same feeling about it. It's clear, and a lot of them oftentimes are, uh, you know, uh, oh, terribly worried about, uh, about nutrients, about speed, about, you know, trying to get things to grow as fast as possible and so on. A lot of times, a lot of them have never even grown the crop that they're worried about to begin with you know so it's sort of like you get these preconceived opinions that come on a plant before anybody's ever even actually developed a relationship with the plant you're going on your first date with that tree right and you're going oh man its eyes are crossed i gotta get that straight you know oh man i've been there in these sorts of situations where the woman thinks that they can manage to change me, which is a real mistake. Don't ever get in a relationship with Bill and think you're going to alter the state of what is Bill. That isn't going to happen. Uh, Bill might alter that state himself, but if I find out that you're not happy with it and you're trying to change it, it's either going to come to an end or the relationship's going to take their pick, you know. I'm kind of the same way about plants, too. Very much so. I have old friends. I'm used to them. I don't like it when people diss plants and they say, oh, this plant's too slow. Yeah. 
you know, you're slow. <laughs> you're dumb. You got a lot of belief systems that make you dumb. <laughs> the plant is fine. <clears throat> you have an attitude, <laughs> and so on and so forth. You know, it's. I really do. I get. I get kind of personal about it because, you know, well, there's my plants are my buddies. I get relationships with them, and they seem to respond back to me giving me what it is that I need uh, I mean my goodness for a long 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 time now the wallet in my back pocket that wallet's full of greenbacks one reason yeah the plants put it there no oh, the plants help me put it there yeah the plants know I need money <laughs> so like I say it's a give and take in this whole thing and I have a tremendous amount of respect and admiration for the plants that I have relationships with. I mean, you can tell by some of the videos I put up that, well, I'll talk about the yellow dragon fruit, or I'll talk about satsumas, or, or jabuticabas, you know, or corn, and uh, and people get all excited. And they, they want that sweet corn seed, or they need a jabuticaba tree, or whatever. Why, why is that? Why am I so effective at convincing other people that these plants are, you know, something that they need in their lives? It's because it's real. Yeah, th these plants live with me. I love these plants. <laughs> they treat me good. I mean, they, it's, a, it's a genuine situation, you know. My happiness over the plants is very genuine, and it's the same happiness I would have, uh, you know, with a great friend with a good cat like Gracie, you know, and yeah, and, uh, it's no difference, really, you know, my relationship with my, with koi fish is pretty much the same as my relationship with a citrus tree. I see them all as being alive, I see them all as being, you know, conscious, um, so, you know, I don't have a lot of myth as far as that stuff's concerned. You know, my beliefs are hypothetical. Whenever I say I believe something, I believe it until I come up with something better. But in the meantime, I have not seen any reason to stop believing um, that, that my plants are reciprocal in this relationship. I actually think it's because of my attitude towards the plants that I work with is the reason that I am who I am as far as plants are concerned with the world and everybody else. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm very scientific when I'm looking for information and when I'm analyzing something, but I am very unscientific <laughs> when it comes to how do I feel about my tree. I love my tree. I like my trees. Same way I like my, my doggies, my cats, you know. I got a pet salamander. <laughs> it's, there's no difference <clears throat> in my mind, and you know it's like Gracie. She she comes up on to the bed in the night, and she comes over and she licks my fingers and says, "Oh, hi, Bill. You're going good, friend. I'm so glad I live here with you." You know, so you get the cat gives me emotional feedback that says, "Yeah, she, I'm worthwhile." Bothering to stop to pet the cat. Be sure the cat's dry when it gets wet in the rain, you know, and basically take care of her. And she, in turn, lets me know that she really appreciates it. Now, when she comes in from the rain, first thing she's going to do is stand there next to the towel and go, Come on, <laughs> dry me off. I'm wet again, you know. <clears throat> I love it when you dry me off. I don't, and it's, plants are the same. They can't talk, but then again, you know, my cat barely talks. I mean, she meows, and I understand some of that, but she doesn't really have a, you know, a, a, a English language by any means. She understands a lot of English. I'm amazed how much English she understands, but she can't speak it. You know, well, that's the same way. They they can't speak back to me to tell me. They tell by action. Same with a cat. Cat tells me by action how it feels. Yeah. So if we can read our communication with our plants we know we're doing good when we got so much fruit hanging in that thing you know or that uh, my cabbages are beautiful firm and hard you know all righty so there we go that's a weird one huh having relationships with your plants 
<laughs> Don't take that wrong. <laughs> Aloha. Y'all hang loose.